Hello everybody, today I have this Peterbilt uh, 579 2016 model with a common side set engine. The problem that it's having is checking the light on. So what I'm gonna do is to uh, check what is going on. Uh, we're gonna connect the uh, inside system. And we go over here to fold cuts. And we have this active cup here it is active amber and we have here after treatment one intake knock sensor at normal rate of change this code number is going to be the 321610 or the specific Cummins number is going to be the 2725 nine that is going to be the oem code and that one the other one is going to be the generic code you want to find almost everywhere so this code actually relates to a bad knock sensor when this code appears mostly the knock sensor has to be replaced in this case uh this is what we're gonna do right now so i'm going to show you the process on how to replace the knock sensor on a comments isx the inlet knock sensor so we're gonna disconnect this and we're gonna proceed to the repair. So, uh, the knock sensor is located right here. It is the one that is behind the turbo. This is the inlet knock sensor. The weird because uh, this uh, knock sensor it is located after the turbo, like Detroit, it is after the DPF where most of the material is out because of, over here you have the uh, doser injector so all the fuel goes over there and is before the knock sensor so all this contamination it is not actually under supervision of this sensor that's right it's kind of weird but nevertheless this is the way this system works anyway the purpose of this video is to show you how to replace it so uh to replace this sensor is pretty easy it is hard and you see it is easy because it's located right here it is hard because it's not so easy as it looks like so uh the first thing we want to do is to cut cables the, i mean the zip ties so you want to look for zip ties all over the cable here and we have some zip ties there we're gonna come this one out and this one too and we have the cable completely out the next step will be to remove that uh, probe here that is the sensor probe it's kind of dark over here so that is the sensor probe over there so that is the sensor probe right here the connector so i'm going to go behind this right here and there is a little tab that i have to leave and it's super hard to see it right here right there right there it is opening it's kind of hard to see it so and right now it's completely open that's the way you gotta be you see completely open so once it's completely open we just pull this one out and this is the way the plug looks like so here we have one bolt and the other one is on top so we're gonna be using a 5 16 or 8 millimeter to remove the two bolts this is a um, 5 16 so this is kind of like hard um, right here right there so we have to do this until we get it out of here Now using the hand will be easier. All right, got it out. And now we wanna remove the top one too. I have both of the bolts right here. See, there's pretty small bolts. And now we can get this probe out. See, this is the way it looks like. Anyway, this is the hardest part of this job, removing this from here. So, 
to remove this, what you're gonna do is use a torch like this one and you're gonna preheat this. You're gonna get it all the way until you can see red. We're gonna continue doing that until we see red. And then after that, we are going to use a grinch like this or a socket like this. See, this is a O2 sensor socket. This works for cars and for trucks as well. So uh, the grinch is a 782. So uh, this one is a 782. So just make sure to grab this. But if this one is super tight, you may need to cut the wiring here, just cut it and just put a regular 7-8 socket and use a big ratchet to release it. Because sometimes this is super hard to get it off. So once you warm it up, it is so easy to get it off. See, now it got loose, easy, see? It's easy. That's right, it's very important that you warm it up, freeze. Don't try to remove it when it is not warm enough. So you have to use that torch to remove it. So we're gonna get the wiring out. And now we can just remove it still tight. So we're gonna be using the wrench. So we're gonna keep using this one then. until we get it completely out and here i have the sensor when uh this thread is super tight this is damaged completely damaged and then you cannot reuse that so you have to be careful that's right it's very important that you heat it up you warm it up with a torch you do it until you can see this red and then you apply the pressure with the wrench and that's how everything is going to be easy if you do do it just like that, like without getting this thing completely hot, you're gonna have problems removing it. So let's get the new part. So I have the new sensor here. This is the part number right here. So this little sensor, it costs around $600, $650 plus depending where you buy it depending who buys it this is going to vary it is a super expensive sensor for whatever it is so once you have it here all you have to make sure is to measure the length of the sensor before installing it see it is the right sensor the right length so that's all you have to be sure before installing the sensor because once you install it they don't want to return I mean they don't want accept they don't want to accept this as a return because this is an electrical part and once you install it you're screwed. So make sure to uh, check that out freeze. This is just a little block to cover it. And we have this white thing over here, this white like grease. This is to prevent corrosion. So don't wipe it off, just leave it there because this is the way we want to start it. So it comes with a probe too, the new one. And this is a brand new one. There is some remanufactured sensors. I don't recommend you to buy those. Just buy them brand new. So anyway, the price is not that much difference. So pretty easy to install it because in this case, this one rotates around, see? In the, the other one, because it's a stack, doesn't rotate. So you have to rotate the whole sensor together. In this case, it's easier because this one rotates. So let's install it here. Well, uh, if you want, you can use a brush. We're gonna use a brush right now to be professional so the people at the dealer cannot complain about my job. So we wanna do clean this one out so it gets completely clean. All right, so it is clean as you can see. I applied some W40 to clean a little more and that's about it. So let's insert this one here. It goes right here and then you just like rotate the thread when I use the 7-8 range to tighten it up 
be sure to don't over tie this one you see the length of this grange this is a pretty, pretty short grange so this is all we need to tighten it up this is going to be around like 40 pounds of torque something like that maximum so don't apply more than that because if you apply too much pressure to this little sensor later it's going to be super hard to remove it see now it's tight so when i apply some pressure this will be enough all right that should be enough that's around like 35 40 pounds of torque which is enough for this sensor because it gets rusted so if you apply around like what like 50 60 i mean that can resist the torque but how to remove that one later is going to be hard for you or for someone else in the future so let's put this over here and this one goes right here and the sensor goes back over there so i'm gonna grab one of these bolts and i'm gonna insert it on there this one right here this is the one yeah now it goes through I put it goes like that and when i insert the other one All right, it is in. And we're gonna do it until we get it completely tight. All right, both of the bolts are completely tight. <laughs> I tied both of them already. So the next thing to do is to install the plug back. All we have to do is to insert it here like this. And we're gonna close the tab, the yellow tab. We have to push it in, and it is in. This is the way it gotta look like. You can see right there. So the last thing to do is to grab some zip ties and tie the cable the way it was. The knock sensor replacement is completely done. Uh, we have the new sensor. It's completely tight. Secure bolts are completely tight. Just double check that everything is where it's supposed to be. So now we have to clear this spot. Um, there is two ways to clear the cut. We can try by deleting the cuts. Sometimes it works. Let's see, try to delete this cut. Let's reset the folds, we'll say O. Yes. And we're just gonna do what tells you to do. And when I wait, until it gets done with that okay this is about to end right now and we switch the ignition on and press ok and let's see if it deletes the cut yeah it did it deleted the cut if this doesn't delete the cut what you have to do is to start the engine uh let it warm out for um around like 30 minutes that is going to be around uh, 150 to 200 degrees of temperature because coming inside at 6 they warm up very fast so you have to do that just let it warm up and then probably the amber light gonna still on but over here the cut will get uh, inactive so you still have to delete it but that is only if it doesn't get deleted normally like with the with the with the software but anyway uh i have show you how to do this process completely if there is something else then you don't understand or you think they need some more a uh, deeper explanation you can use the comment section below to ask that question or if you want me to do a different video if you wanna send some kind of support or donation to my channel, you can use the description section below where I have details how to send support to my channel so I can continue making helpful videos like the one I'm doing right now for everybody that wants to learn more and more about trucks. But uh, if you don't want to, you can just subscribe to the channel, like the video and share it. With that, 
you can help me a lot as well so just uh, do that like the video share it subscribe and you know as always thank you for watching